from Washington, this is VOA News. Egypt gets ready for marches by pro and anti Morsi groups. A Russian whistleblower convicted posthumously. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Cairo is bracing today for mass protests by supporters and opponents of ousted President Mohamed Morsi, and both sides are promising to march peacefully. Mr. Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood is refusing to back down from demands that he be reinstated. It also strongly opposes plans for any transitional government. A Brotherhood spokesman tells VOA the group will keep pressuring the leaders of what he calls a military coup with sit-ins and million-man marches. The International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies is expanding health services for thousands of refugees who have fled the violence in Syria. Lisa Schlein has details in Geneva. The International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies operates a number of health and assistance programs for thousands of Syrian refugees. The group's latest venture is a plan to open a new 60-bed hospital in Jordan at the end of August to coincide with the opening of a third refugee camp in the Al-Azraq area. Red Cross Emergency Health Coordinator Pano Saristo has just returned from several weeks in Jordan, where he led an assessment team of several national societies. He says the Jordanian government is building the new camp to alleviate the overcrowding of Al Zakri camp, which houses 130,000 people. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. U.S. and Chinese officials have agreed to restart negotiations on a bilateral investment treaty. The move is being hailed by Washington as a significant breakthrough that could expand Chinese market access for American investors. China's Commerce Minister revealed the deal Thursday on the sidelines of U.S.-China security and economic talks in Washington. U.S. Treasury Secretary Jacob Liu praised it, saying the agreement marks the first time Beijing's agreed to negotiate a treaty covering all sectors and stages of investment with another country. World stock markets advanced Thursday after the chief of the U.S. Central Bank said continuation of easy money policies is needed to keep fueling the American economic recovery. Both the Bellwether Dow Jones Industrial Average of 30 key stocks and the broader Standard & Poor's Index of 500 companies set new record highs. Earlier, Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index closed up 2.5%, and markets were also higher in London, Frankfurt, and Paris. U.S. congressional inspectors have highlighted a second case of waste at a U.S. military base in Afghanistan in as many days, saying an $11 million trash incineration system is underutilized, leaving most refuse to be burned in open-air pits. Judges at the U.N. War Crimes Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia reinstated a genocide charge against former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadzic for his role in the killings of non-Serbs in the country's war from 1992 to 1995. The decision overturns his acquittal last year of one count of genocide. He's been charged separately for his alleged involvement in the 1995 Srebrenica massacre of 8,000 Muslim men and boys. In Russia, Courts convicted dead whistleblower Sergei Magnitsky of tax evasion. Jessica Golaher explains. In what looked like a sort of Stalin-esque show trial, Sergei Magnitsky was convicted of tax evasion charges, though he has been dead for nearly four years. The whistleblower worked as a lawyer for Russia's largest Western investment fund, Hermitage Capital. Magnitsky said he had uncovered a massive scheme by Interior Ministry officials to fraudulently receive funds for $230 million in taxes paid for by that firm. 
In 2008, Magnitsky was arrested for tax evasion by the same officials he accused of tax fraud. A year later, he died in jail at age 37 of pancreatitis. Jessica Gallahert for VOA News, Moscow. British scientists say they've discovered a method for storing and retrieving huge amounts of digital data that could last for over a million years. Using extremely short and intense pulses of laser light, researchers at the University of Southampton assembled structures and fused quartz glass that can withstand temperatures up to 1,000 degrees Celsius. The data can be read by an optical microscope with polarized lenses. Scientists say the new method opens the possibility of creating memory disks with an unprecedented memory capacity. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. More at voanews.com.